its complicity in unspeakable human rights violations overseas against women, gays, laborers, and indigenous peoples, to its efforts to subvert U.S. foreign policy and deceive the courts, the public, and its own stockholders, Unical is emblematic of corporate abuse and corporate power run amok. Extending a business deal with Burma Army is immoral. Unical cannot do business in Burma without supporting that hopeless regime. It cannot justify. The curse for me has been the fact that in making these, uh, you know, documentary films, I've seen that they actually can impact change. So I'm just compelled to, you know, keep making them. Yep, that's me doing what I do. All year long, I give big companies a hard time. But at Christmas time, I like to set aside my differences and reach out to big business, like cigarette companies. I went to Littleton, Colorado, where the Columbine shooting took place. And I didn't know this, but when I arrived, I learned what the primary job is of the parents of the kids who go to Columbine High School. The number one job in Littleton, Colorado, they work for Lockheed Martin, building weapons of mass destruction. But they don't see the connect between what they do for a living and what their kids do at school or did at school. And so I'm kind of, you know, up on my, you know, high horse, <laughs> you know, thinking about this. And I thought, you know, I said to my wife, you know, we both are, you know, sons and daughters of auto workers in Flint, Michigan. There isn't a single one of us back in Flint, any of us, including us, who ever stopped to think this thing we do for a living, the building of automobiles, is probably the single biggest reason why the polar ice caps are going to melt and end civilization as we know it. There's no connect between I'm just an assembler on an assembly line building a car, which is good for people in society. It moves them around. But never stop to think about the larger picture and the larger responsibility of what we're doing. Ultimately, we have to, as individuals, accept responsibility for our collective action and, and the larger harm that it causes you know, uh, in, in, in our world. Today, the first of two historic town hall meetings will get underway in Arcata, California. 61% of Arcadians voted in favor of publicly discussing whether democracy is even possible when large corporations wield so much wealth and power under law. They also voted to form a committee to ensure democratic control over corporations in Arcata. Corporations are not accountable to the democratic process. That's what this is about. I don't want to make decisions about everything that goes on in their corporation, but I do have a strong belief that they need to be held accountable to us. Yeah. If we don't like certain products, if we don't like uh, Pepsi Cola, or Bank America, or if you don't like what they do, don't use them. That's the way I see the you know, people's power is. You have a lot more money than me. You have more votes than I do if we use the model of boycott and voting with your dollars. That's, a, that's an undemocratic situation. What are we afraid of? I mean, are all the businesses going to leave Arcata? I don't think so. And if they did, we'd deal with it or we'd figure it out or we'd do something different. We're creative people. I just don't see why we're afraid. If you think it's tough making a decision where to buy your stuff today, how tough do you think it is when there's only one provider and it's the state? And by the way, you don't get to have this little democracy forum in those communities either. People that say they fear their government, I really hope that they understand that they're allowed to participate in their government. They're not allowed to participate in anything the corporations do. So don't fear the government. Help it be the government that you won't fear. If this many people around the country would do this instead of watching Super Bowl Sunday, our nation would be controlled by the people, not by the corporations. No more chain restaurants in Arcata after a long-awaited decision by Over the past decade, 
we have been gaining ground. And when I say we, I mean ordinary people committed to the welfare of all of humanity, all people irrespective of gender and class and race and religion, all species on the planet. We managed to take the biggest government and one of the largest chemical companies to court on the case of Neem and win a case against them. W.R. Grace and the U.S. government's patent on Neem was revoked by a case we brought along with the Greens of European Parliament and the International Organic Agriculture Movement. We won because we worked together. We have overturned nearly 99% of the Basmati patent of rice tech. Again, because we worked as a worldwide coalition, old women in Texas, scientists in India, activists sitting in Vancouver, a little Basmati action group. We stopped the third world being viewed as the pirate and we showed the corporations were the pirate. Look how little it took for Gandhi to work against the salt laws of the British, where the British decided the way they would make their armies and police forces bigger is just tax the salt. And all that Gandhi did was walk to the beach, pick up the salt, and say, nature gives it for free. We need it. We've always made it. We will violate your laws. We will continue to make salt. We've had a similar commitment for the last decade in India that any law that makes it illegal to save seed is a law not worth following. We will violate it because saving seed is a duty to the earth and to future generations. We thought it would really be symbolic. It is more than symbolic. It is becoming a survival option. Farmers who grow their own seeds, save their own seeds, don't buy pesticides, have threefold more incomes than farmers who are locked into the chemical treadmill, depending on Monsanto and Cargill. We have managed to create alternatives that work for people. There are many tools for, for bringing back community, but the importance is not the tools. I mean, there's litigation, there's legislation, there's direct action, there's education, boycotts, social investment. There's many, many ways to, uh, to address issues of corporate power. But in the final analysis, what's really important is the vision. You have to have a better story. Do I know you well enough to call you fellow plunderers? There is not an industrial company on earth, not an institution of any kind, not mine, not yours, not anyone's, that is sustainable. I stand convicted by me, myself alone, not by anyone else, as a plunderer of the earth, but not by our civilization's definition by our civilization's definition, I'm a captain of industry in the eyes of many, a kind of modern day hero. But really, really, the first industrial revolution is flawed. It is not working. It is unsustainable. It is the mistake. And we must move on to another and better industrial revolution and get it right this time. When I think of what could be, I visualize an organization of people committed to a purpose. And the purpose is doing no harm. I see a, a company that has severed the umbilical cord to earth for its raw materials, taking raw materials that have already been extracted and using them over and over again driving that process with renewable energy. It is our plan, it remains our plan to climb Mount Sustainability, that mountain that